it's like he's antagonizing her on purpose by saying he didn't care enough to pay attention to them. And it seems like he's mad at her. Aloha everybody, my name is Lehua and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator and host a podcast across worlds. In this video, we are going to do a recap slash review of Tsukimichi season 2 episode 25. The episode opens with Makoto returning to the demi plane after successfully conquering Kalyan. We see the aftermath in Rotgard, where Lam and Mondo showcase their teamwork, taking down remaining mutants. Meanwhile, Laurel utilizes its resources, Dragonites, to bring relief supplies, highlighting their compassion and strength. At the academy, Makoto reunites with his surprise students, revealing his true age because, you know, he can now talk to them, he can speak the human language, and he's showing or they're hearing his voice and he sounds young to them. And he also shares that he's declining the full-time teaching position. An interesting turn of events sees Makoto meeting with Zara. Yeah, the leader of that merchant group or merchant guild in Rothgard. He was so mean. He was so arrogant and he caused Makoto trouble. The tables have turned. Because Makoto saved a brothel. He met up with the manager there and she promised to introduce him to her boss. Her boss, Ozara. Yeah, this was kind of awkward but also satisfying at the same time. With Zara, he was forced to thank Makoto for his contributions and even offers him free service at the brothel which Makoto very politely declined, saying, I'm still only half a man. That could be taken in many ways. <laughs> to quantify this part, Zara was ordered by the church, by Lemia, and by Laurel to accommodate him. So they're all in his debt. Not only is, like, those nations but also Rothgard. so we'll see what happens in the future Makoto then meets with Joshua the prince of Lamia who we later or previously learned is actually a princess he assures her he'll keep her secret identity safe he also meets Root a somewhat tense encounter where Makoto reveals Sophia is alive and encourages Root to take care of her. So it has been confirmed that she did not die and he left her for Root. This scene eludes that Makoto really doesn't fully trust Root. Like, really doesn't. He totally calls out Root for using Sophia to see Makoto during the fight and he's calling him out on their connection but he doesn't ask for details very interesting on that part in my opinion the episode takes a shocking turn as we see root confronting sophia so the scene this scene starts out with sophia she's in a forest some kind of forest it's raining and she's finding her next move to get stronger and then root just appears before her. Here we learn a dark truth. Sophia and Lancer were created by Root, considered failures who couldn't control their desires. This thing was really intense. I feel like this was a highlight in my opinion. So as Root is explaining his connection to Sophia and Lancer, he explains that Sophia was created from Root mixing his blood with a human. My question is, was this through like an experiment or did you give birth to Sophia? Because, you know, can still mix blood with DNA through birthing and whatnot. Anyways, and Lancer was created from two lives he created on a whim. What does that mean? Two lives that he created. You know, this whole thing kind of sounds like he's God. And I believe Root is trying to be God. 
Then Root calls them merely fragments of the ambition he once held. He said it was fun watching them at first, but now he regrets it a little. What does he mean by regret? Does he mean that he regrets making them? Does he regret what they've done? Like, so fake. And I'm so curious. And I doubt we'll learn more. <laughs> Sophia looks her age in this scene. She looks like a teenager who has an, an identity crisis. She's not a human. She's not a dragon. She doesn't have a family. I think the closest one to her was Lancer. She's feared by all, and she can't have a normal relationship with anyone. To make matters worse, <laughs> Root then explains that when it comes to power, there is no good or evil. People become twisted because their mind is weak. He calls her a loser trash a failure who couldn't control her mind or desires the more root talks the more provoked sophia is it's like he's antagonizing her on purpose by saying he didn't care enough to pay attention to them and it seems like he's mad at her there's just so much going on i'm really conflicted with this because root is a semi-ally, but he's such a jerk. Root then takes the essence of the dragons from Sophia, the ones that she's absorbed, and turns them into eggs, intending to leave them with guardians. So to further explain this, dragons don't die. They just regress back into their eggs or into their egg form. Question is, who are going to... Who is going to be the guardian of each dragon? Yeah. The next thing we see Hibiki revealing her plans to travel to Laurel. She's telling the king of Lemia that she's going to go to Laurel. And she tells him it's to travel and she'll fulfill her hero duties. However, it's to return the priestess to Laurel per Shiki's request. Meanwhile, Tomoki, Tomoki seems to be consumed by his growing obsession. I really don't like this guy. I feel like he's that antagonist that's there to be like a joker, a wild card. I'm unsure how that's going to play out because he's actually being manipulated by the princess so is she going to be able to guide his obsession his craziness or will he overpower her then on the demon side we got Il and rona discussing their next invasion hinting at future conflicts rona also talks about that she's going to introduce makoto to the demon king Makoto plans to build a relationship with the demons. He has to meet with the demon king. I'm really curious how this is going to work out because Rona did him dirty. However, that gave him an opportunity to go uh, take over Fort Silla and Kalanian. Now, back at the Demi plane, we're celebrating. We're having victory party with all the demi humans. They're drinking the alcohol, the sake that Tomoe made. Like Tomoe is super excited about the sake because they now have four seasons, and she's totally planning on making a sake for every season. So yeah, future planning, excitement, so happy. <laughs> Anyways, I kind of went off track. So we see that bonds have been growing with the Debbie humans. Notably, the Gorgons seem to admire Lime and Mondo, which is interesting because they have really good chemistry and they look similar. They have like kind of similar skin tone, body build. They have similar hair color. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how 
that will work with the Gorgons and Lime and Mondo because the Gorgons, they're having a hard time building quote relationships quote with the other denizens because they suck out the life force and uh, they it's gonna be really interesting yeah the episode ends on a heartwarming note with Makoto expressing his deep appreciation for Tomoe, Mio, and Shiki he's Recapping, reminiscing all the accomplishments they've made together, each one made huge contributions to the success that they're at now. It's pretty much doing like a recap of season two. He then offers them his last name, Misumi, solidifying their bond as a family. This was really cute because in my reaction, I was pointing out that they seem like siblings. Because throughout this episode, we see the closeness of Tomoe, Mio, and Shiki. They had fights, such as like when Makoto was praising Shiki's help assistance, Tomoe and Mio went to quote talk quote with him. <laughs> and then in this scene where Makoto is talking to them, Mia asks for her reward. And what she asks him is, please allow me to attend to your needs. <laughs> Makoto totally knew what she meant. And then Mia then backtracks and she's, she fumbles her opportunity to be closer to him. Tomoe and Shiki totally laugh at her at this part. As they should. Like, she totally fumbled. That was like the perfect moment for her to get closer with Makoto. And I pointed out that they seem like siblings trying to vie for Makoto's attention. <laughs> so having them as family is perfect icing, cherry on the top to this scene. This episode focuses on the aftermath of the war and the characters' emotional journeys. We see heartwarming reunions, unexpected alliances, and the lingering consequences of past actions. The revelation about Sophia's origins adds a layer of complexity to the narrative. Finally, the em episode emphasizes a found family theme with Makoto solidifying his bond with Tomoe, Mio, and Shiki. In addition to a recap and an analysis of this episode, I want to delve into some interesting foreshadows that might hold significance for the future. One, the Gorgon's frustration. The Gorgon's inability to form relationships with other demi-humans might foreshadow a future storyline where they seek acceptance or even lash out due to their frustration. Their admiration for Lime and Mondo could hint at a possible future dynamic where they form relationships with the duo. Then we got Tomogi's obsession. Tomiki's increasingly strange behavior is a clear sign of an unhealthy re obsession brewing. The episode doesn't reveal the target of his obsession, but future episodes will likely explore this and its potential consequences. Ia and Rona's next invasion. The demon lords Generals hinting at their next invasion suggests there's no permanent peace. It will be interesting to see where they strike next and how Makoto and his allies will respond, especially since Mio defeated one of the demon commanders left. She, it was to the point where she sucked out his mana and left was reverted down to like a snake form. So it'll be really interesting to see how. One of their former allies is with Makoto. <laughs> then we got Sophia and the dragon eggs. Root took the dragon essence from Sophia, turning them into eggs, which leaves room for speculation. Will these eggs hatch into allies or future threats? Who will become their guardians? Then we got Grant the Katana. Root's comment about Sophia's katana, Grant suggests it might have a deeper significance yet to be revealed. 
perhaps it holds a connection to a past or a future. And then we have Hibiki at Laurel. Laurel Commonwealth is very influenced by Japanese culture, Japanese, Hibiki's home world. So it'll be really interesting to see how she will be in Laurel. And that's our recap slash review of Suki Michi season two, episode 25. What did you think about this episode? What did you think about this video? Let me know in the comments below. And if you liked this, don't forget to give it a like. And if you want to see more, subscribe. We also host podcasts across worlds. What is number one podcast for anime and manga? We sometimes interview people in the anime industry. So if you're interested in that, link to the podcast will be in the description. Other than that, my name is Lehua, and this is the Super Fina channel. Reacting, reviewing, recapping, Tsukimichi Season 2, Episode 25. Hope you guys like this video, and we'll see you on the next one. Ah, we hope.